You're welcome to the Policy Council. My name is Okwemi Agbaje. Today we talk about the insurance sector in Nigeria. How is it doing? Why has it not developed as much as it should have? Or hasn't it? What is, what's the outlook for the sector? What is changing that is positive? I have to take these issues with me, one of the best qualified Nigerians on the subject. Enjoy the program. You're welcome back to the Policy Council. My guest today is a graduate of actuarial science, one of the few we have in Nigeria. He's an MBA from University of Ibadan. He's attended the ONA President Management Program at Harvard Business School, the Chief Executives Program at the Lagos Business School. He's been the president of the Nigerian Insurance Association, so he's very competent to talk about insurance in Nigeria. My guest is the CEO of Custodian and Allied Insurance, Mr. Wale Oshin. You're welcome to the Policy Council. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so let, let you, you've had um, decades of working experience in, in, in Nigerian insurance, from starting from Nikon, I, which, which one might call the school for all of Nigeria's leadership. In, so what, 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 in your view, why hasn't insurance developed in Nigeria? Well, I think um, primarily the, the, the greatest challenge the industry has is challenge. I'm sorry, is um, awareness. Mm. Um, and the fact that um, the average person sees insurance mm. as more of a cost mm. than as a, an economic stabilizer. Mm. Um, the reality is that people don't see it as that instrument that you can use um, to get back to where you are mm. in, the event of a, in the event of a catastrophe. Mm. Um, I believe also that one of the reasons why we've had um, low penetration yeah. is because this is not yet a credit society. Okay. Um, we typically compare Nigeria with South Africa, the UK, and you know all the other uh, first world countries. Mm. Um, it's 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 um, actually uh, compulsory to ensure in all these countries because mm. you're a debt, most of them are debtors mm. you know you can't buy a vehicle or buy a uh, uh, television set mm. uh, you know uh, with cash down Be exactly yeah, without uh, uh, some form of credit mm. so I believe that when the banking industry mm. is able to extend its credits you know and I know they did start that at some point in time before the collapse in the sector mm. um, insurance will ride on the back of that in terms of penetration Okay, so fantastic. So there's a, le there's a link with financial services and lending and the lending country. Right, but let, yes. me, let me take you back to, to Nikon, for yeah. instance, and many of the older insurance companies. Why would you, um, uh, without dwelling on any particular institution, why do you, today we have institutions like yours, Custodian yeah. and Allied, right. Leadway, some of the yeah. relatively younger institutions. What, mm. what, what happened to the older insurance companies um, well, well I think some of them are still there I mean yes. Lidway is not uh, young it's, it's not, not that young, young. Yeah. yeah Lidway is over 40 hmm. uh, Royal Exchange is about a hundred hmm. um, Niger insurance is still there yeah um, law Union and rock is still there okay so we still have but they're not as dominant as, as they used to be I would say well I think you know typically all companies go through their cycles hmm. uh, but they're still solid companies okay uh, they're, they're solid and um, they still offer uh, the traditional insurance services, okay. you know, so they're, they're there, okay. you know, and um, they, 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 they hold their space. Okay, let, 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 let's explore this link between one reason you've given uh, for the low insurance penetration in Nigeria is this link with culture or with credit, mm -hmm. but I would argue, and many have argued that there's also a link with culture. Um, so, for instance, um, I've had someone on this program in relation to another specialized type mm -hmm. of insurance say that there's something to do with uh, people's aversion for catastrophe, for danger, a mm -hmm. preference to be optimistic and prayerful mm -hmm. and rely on God or whatever else we believe in. Does that play a role in people shying away from insurance? Well, I think that is secondary, honestly mm -hmm. speaking. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 you know, if you pick the typical shopping list of anybody mm -hmm. um, that's not on a credit list, Insurance will be the last item. Why? Mm. Because it's fortuitous. Mm. Today you don't have that catastrophe, so the, la the natural thing is for you to put it at the, 
you know, at the end of your shopping list. Mm. Right? And you arrive. Right. Every other thing is buying. <laughs> yeah. It's something you need. Yes. That day. Instantly. Mm. You know, so it's, it's, it's just a typical, I think it's a typical uh, uh, human being type behavior. Mm. And I don't think it will change mm. um, if we had put the same situation in the UK and the United States where people had a choice mm. to insure. If they had a choice to insure, insurance would be number one. Mm. Apart from the corporates that typically will put that in their corporate uh, 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 risk uh, uh, profile, yeah. um, I don't think individuals even in America, in England, will quickly go and do insurance without compulsion. Except they had to buy a car and there was a financing Correct. that required insurance Correct. or the c country or community required insurance for their property yes. and they were going to go to jail if they yeah, didn't exactly. insure Exactly. So it's some level of compulsion hmm. you know, resides silently somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And, and you may have a point because vehicle insurance, third party, party at least, yes. Is, is prevalent here, yes. and that's because you'll yes. be arrested if you do. Exactly. Okay, interesting. Let, we're having this um, interesting discussion around insurance in Nigeria. My guest is the CEO of Custodian and Allied Insurance, Mr. Wale Oshie. We'll be right back. Who knows Abi better thing? Abi, who knows like better thing? Ha. Ah. Hmm. Who these fine, fine things where they see so? Now, Monica, may they say, do I now? Abi, I think. It's like, you know, I mean, excuse me, I did pay my tax. I did do a thing, I did pay my tax. Say you don't pay your own tax. If you pay your tax, I pay all. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You welcome back. It's still the Policy Council. My guest is still Mr. Oluwole Oshin. He's a, an actual scientist and a chartered insurer, a former president of NIA, the Nigerian Insurance Association, and current CEO of Consolidated and Allied Insurance. So let, let's go back to why um, we've had challenges around insurance in Nigeria. Um, one of my mysteries, and maybe I'm, I'm sure you would enlighten me on that, is the comparison of insurance and banking. Yeah. Um, if, if you look at, say, Nigeria in 1955 or 1960, mm. they were comparative. Um, they were almost of similar profile. The CEO yeah. of insurance companies were almost equivalent to this. And, and the companies were maybe reasonably comparable. But yes. that changed. Mm. Banking took off, but yeah. insurance arguably hasn't. Mm. So again, why would you think, why, why did that happen in your mm. view? Well, I, I think um, something happened in the banking industry. Mm. Um, and there was a revolution at some point in time, mm -hmm. which was backed by government. Mm. Um, I think the same revolution that happened in the banking industry at that time is silently happening okay. in the insurance industry today. Okay. Because we have a regulator that is focused and is looking at turning around the entire industry. Um, true, in the past, you know, insurance was almost at par with banks. As a matter of fact, in other countries, insurance companies own banks. Mm. Um, but a lot of factors have, have been responsible for the, 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 the problems that we have in the insurance industry. Mm. I'll give you a series of examples. Mm. Uh, people talk about the size of the insurance industry today, and we say that the insurance industry is nowhere compared to banks. Mm. I disagree. Okay. If we're comparing the insurance industry in Nigeria with that of South Africa, I'm going to say you would have to bring back the pension business. Okay. The pension business in Nigeria, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the PFAs in Nigeria is part of insurance in other countries. It okay. was taken out of the insurance industry. Okay. The health insurance hmm. that you have is a part of the insurance industry. It was taken out of the insurance industry. Hmm. Um, and you, there's still, I think there's one or two other areas that have been taken out of the insurance industry. When you aggregate these things, you wouldn't say that the insurance industry has done badly. And as far as I am concerned, if you're going to compare apples with apples, mm. if we aggregate the true insurance products and we put it side by side with South Africa, we haven't done badly. Mm. The pension funds today has assets under management of close to about three point something trillion. trillion. Yeah. That is insurance money. Mm. Because pension is it's integral yeah. to insurance. Yeah. And the truth is our balance sheets were stripped off. Okay. And assets were asked to be transferred to PFAs. Okay. And that has affected the And many of you, many of you insurance companies 
own equity well in equity yes a number of us do own we do own equity but you know when well, they talk they, about they insurance they call it something else mm. so it makes the industry look does that reflect the lobbying power or the institutional influence of insurance you can say that mm. you can say that um that is that you cannot you can't rule that out mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um be, because that has affected the industry uh, uh over the years the, the other point that people make is that if you look at um products and services yeah. I, I i indeed hold that view so let me challenge you yes yeah. um i i have all wondered i mean we looked at south africa again mm -hmm. even in terms of proto uh, typical insurance yes. right? South African insurance sector has proven able to create products. We've heard about mm -hmm. things they've created around funerals, mm -hmm. around all sorts of lifestyle yeah. issues yes. that have made them relevant to the people. Mm -hmm. have, we haven't done the same in Nigeria, have well, we? Well, I'll, I'll say two things or hmm. three things. Um, with regards to product development, um, yes, in terms of jazzing up mm. Products, basic, product. basic products, maybe we need to do more. Okay. Um, but one thing that people don't understand is that insurance sits on principles. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. And there's very limited products in its real terms that can be developed. Mm -hmm. Because we have to sit on certain principles before those products can actually be generated. But one thing South Africa has, mm -hmm. and which you know, um, we have to face in our industry today, is the development of actuaries. Okay. Now, South Africa churns out professional actuaries year in, year out in large numbers. Mm. And what does that do to the industry? Apart from even the industry, the entire economy. Mm. It allows them to develop the products you're talking about. Mm. We don't have that confidence to continuously develop products because you have to be sure that your products, mm. at the end of the day, will be profitable to the insurance company in the long run. And that's the job of the actuary. Mm. They're able to project into the future and bring you back to the present mm. to be able to establish whether products, you know, uh, your liabilities will match up with the uh, 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 risks yeah. that, I'm sorry, the, the, the income yeah. that, that you're deriving from the products. Mm. So they, they're able to do a lot of things. Mm. So that's an appeal. You know, the insurance, it, well, not the insurance industry, the Nigerian economy needs to develop Actuarial. actuaries, actuaries mm. Mm. professional actuaries, mm. um, because that is very, and very, And that's very something critical. the universities and the professional institutions have to work on? Well, it's not. I studied actuarial science. Mm. It's like studying accounting. BSA accounting is not the same thing as a chartered accountant. Okay. Well, you can say that, well, I know what it, they do. I'm a chartered insurer. Mm. Uh, but the the professional actuary has mm. to go through further actuarial professional, professional exams, and which I can tell you mm. is probably the most difficult professional program you can meet anywhere in the world. Mm. Um, but Nigerians are capable. We have very smart kids that come out with first class in maths, physics, and so on and so forth. We need to encourage that because that is the only way the, f the entire financial services sector will actually develop when you have more actuaries in the market space. Excellent. Okay, let's take a time out. I'm having this um, illuminating, uh, enlightening discussion with the f a former president of the Nigerian Insurance Association, Mr. Wale Oshie. He's the CEO of Custodian and Allied Insurance. We'll be right back. Government wants our city to become a mega modern city. And so, government is providing modern markets for us to carry out our business. Now, this requires money. So, we need to pay our taxes to help government to help us. I pay my taxes. I hope you've paid yours. I pay. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You're welcome back. It's still the Policy Council and we're still talking insurance with one of the CEOs of the very leading insurance companies in Nigeria, Custodian and Allied Insurance, Mr. Wale Oshin. So, so, but, but you, you mentioned, Mr. Oshin, that um, a transformation is going on, some mm. good things. What mm. are these good things? How is the industry changing positively? Well, the industry is changing, you know, with regards, regards to regulation. I mean, mm. we are, um, there's a whole lot going on in the, in the, in the regulatory space. Mm. I think that is starting with, you know, uh, accounts presentation, transparency, reporting, and so on and so forth. I mean, this gives investors a lot of confidence, okay. um, and it puts the industry in good light. Mm. Uh, the regulator has also, you know, championed the penetration of insurance. Mm. Um, recently, 
uh, licenses are being given out now for micro insurance, okay. which is meant to attend to those areas that typically the bigger insurance companies would not go to. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's the interland, you okay. know, the villages and so on and so forth that have needs, flood cases and all that mm -hmm. will be addressed under micro insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Taka full insurance, okay. which addresses religion, okay. you know, um, and for those people who feel more comfortable. Uh, you know, with doing insurance in a particular way. Yeah. So all these things are steps that are being put in place. Mm -hmm. um, also, the industry at the moment is attracting uh, professionals from the banking sector because things are gradually changing and I think they can see it also. Mm. And I think that is the kind of revolution that happened in the banking industry when, you know, the, the AIBs were sort of like replaced with the MBAs. Mm. Okay, um, that's what we... So that's going on in insurance? Yeah, that's happening in the insurance industry today. Um, the typical insurance person today, I would say, is a much, much more confident mm. professional mm. than maybe 30 years ago mm. or 20-something years ago. Mm. So, you know, there's the... the, but the well, what would you say about the financial capacity of, yes. of the, at least the leading... Insurance, uh, companies. insurance companies. Well, I think I think it's it's pretty decent. Okay. You know, uh, there's 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 been a lot going on, and in terms of structure, processes, and uh, 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 capacity, mm. uh, we're not doing too badly. Don't forget, insurance does not stop in one place. Mm. You know, we're backed up by reinsurers, and okay. reinsurers are backed up by retrocessioners. Mm. You may not know what goes. I on. didn't know about that <laughs> yeah. third category you just mentioned. Yeah, so you may not really know know exactly what goes on in the insurance space. Mm. And a risk that you insure here may end up in Brazil, but you mm. won't know. You mm. may end up in Lloyds, you won't know. Just from the yeah. benefit of my viewers, just give us a sense of that. So, you are an insurer. Yes. You, you take out an insurance on Okwemi Agbaje's yes. house. Correct. What then happens? Well, I mean, Okwemi Agbaje's house is probably a localized policy, so mm. it's not necessarily... Okay. But, but I mean, it uh, depends. Maybe I mean, an NFC ship. Well, even let's use Okwemi's house, okay. which could be built with, you know, of gold. gold. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, and you know, we, we do have uh, treaties. Okay. You know, and our treaties sometimes are led by companies like Munich Re, mm. Swiss Re, mm. and proportions of the of, of, of the risks beyond our own capacity are taken are into shared. those yeah shared into those treaties. Mm. So you're sending your treaty to to to, to Germany. Mm. From Germany, the, the reinsurers there also have what you call retrocessioners, mm. and they may, the, the risk may end up in America mm. or may end up in some other country. Mm. So it's it's it, and that is so that's that a is pretty the, global the, 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 risk the, the, profile. Yes, it's a global it's a global business. Mm. Insurance is a global business. It's not localized, mm. and that's what makes it completely different from banking. It, the level of um, knowledge that is required to mm. be an insurance underwriter is actually really very deep. Mm. You know, you need to know a lot of things. Well, what was the role of, I know I've mentioned that you were president of the Nigerian insurance, insurance Association. What, what role does it play in the industry, the NIA? Well, the NIA is a trade association. Mm. And um, in recent times, what it's trying to do is to actually move towards self-regulation. Uh, uh, mm. In other words, we are looking at our companies, our, com our member companies, and you know we're trying to portray insurance industry in good light to the public. Where you have challenges, they even set up a, a, a customer complaint bureau, okay. you know, which is headed by a renowned retired Supreme Court judge. Wow. You know, so what the industry is saying is, look, we're not shying away from our responsibilities. You know, if you do have infractions or you have problems with the insurance industry, please bring your problems to the customer bureau, mm. and we've surrendered it to an independent retired judge so that mm. the issues of claim settlements the issues of uh, poor performance and all that we're willing to address it mm. and then it also addresses lobby it addresses you know other areas pertaining to member the, let, i must take this point one of the reasons one of the complaints ordinary nigerians maybe some unenlightened maybe yeah. but some maybe with some cost have with insurance is that they, they never pay um, why should you, do, you, do you just pay them when you need, they don't pay, they start yeah. telling you all sorts of conditions, mm. the fine plates, this yeah. one, that one. What, what, what has the industry done about that? What is it doing about it? Well, that's part of what the regulator is even doing. I know there's a new document that's just come out from the office of the regulator, uh, which is primarily focused on customer service. Okay. Um, realizing that the industry has that name. But I must say, that that reputation is not localized, yeah. it's international, it's and it's very simple. The reason is very simple. When you're given a bank uh, uh, credit and you're asked to sign a contract, you spend time to read it, mm. 
before you sign you it. Sign. When you're given a policy document in an insurance contract, you don't read it. Mm. You just throw it. So every relationship has terms and conditions. Mm. I mean, you can't expect that the insurance company will pay you your claims under all circumstances, <laughs> irrespective of how it comes. Mm. You know, certain rules will have to apply, and those rules sit on fundamental insurance principles, okay. which have been tested in the courts over the centuries. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Let's take a final time out. I'll be back with Mr. Wally Oshie, CEO of Custodian and Allied Insurance. You welcome back. It's my final segment with Mr. Wale Oshin. He's the president of the Nigerian Insurance Association. You're something in the Lagos Business School Alumni Association as well. I'm vice president. And incoming president. Incoming president. Yes. Okay, so we have that in common. Um, CP, you, that's CP the chief executive program nine yeah. at the Lagos Business School. Yes. Okay, so custodian and allied, it's something I'm very impressed with, I can say, about your companies, you, you've had this series of successful mergers, mm -hmm. or well, yeah. apparently successful mergers. Mm -hmm. You've done a series. Tell us about them and, yeah. and how you've got them right, how you've selected mm -hmm. partners, mm -hmm. and what benefits you've derived from them. Yeah. Well, for us, I mean, growth is um, along two lines, mm -hmm. organic and via mergers and acquisitions. I mean, mm -hmm. so that's our strategy mm -hmm. uh, for growth. Um, and um, we started the journey of integration in 2006, mm. you know, where we integrated with our first company, uh, which was Signal Insurance at the time. Mm. Um, in 2007, we took on another company, Fire Equity in general, mm. you know. Um, and then, at, I must say, even in 2007, that was when we started to shadow uh, Crusader, Crusader, the Crusader Group, which you just did in 2013, which we just did in 2013. So mm. it took us seven years, six to seven years, to actually um, actualize uh, that vision. Um, for us, we saw value in the different companies, and um, it was important for us that you know there was a dominant uh, partner mm. so that the vision remains intact. Mm. Um, our experience. Uh, whilst I won't say has been 100% rosy, mm. um, has been quite decent because mm. um, in m and A's or acquisitions, you have to hit the ground running. Mm. Um, you have to be very focused. You have to know the things you want to do when you get into the space mm. and you execute it with clinical precision. Mm. Um, there is no time to waver. Mm. Um, so far, so good. Um, and um, the series of growths, both internally, uh, organically, as well as um, through acquisitions, has taken us to a uh, comfortable top three company. Mm. Uh, we operate in different sectors of the, of the financial space now. We, we have a subsidiary pension business, uh, PFA, which is doing very well. So mm. I think it's a top, top nine or top eight uh, PFA. Uh, we have a life business, which hitherto we didn't have. Um, and we also have the general insurance uh, business, uh, which, which, you know, principally sits us in, in good stead in the financial services sector. Interesting. Yeah. And I would say there's, uh, there's, a, there's something I find impressive, amazing, uh, beautiful about the mergers you've done. I, I know your first, if we take individuals now, yes. the first one was essentially no. you and Toyo yes. Ducey. You have a similar kind of profile mm. and personality. There seems mm. to be some apparent, at least yes. for to the outsider, mm. compatibility. Yes. And mm. then the fire in general was who was the leading person in that group? Well, the fire equity in general was, was a group of investors. Okay. You know, but we, we saw in it um, a small and nimble company like custodian. Uh, almost so, similar to yours. Yes, and we realized that there were not too many legacy issues. Okay. You know, and so then Crusader brings them, um, I don't know about how many shareholders, but Mr. Mobolumi, I know, yes. uh, comes into the picture as Correct. well. Correct. So you have some, what do you look out for? What did you look out for in the people behind all of these firms you've matched? With? Well, you, you got it spot on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we signal, we looked at the business, but we also looked at one or two people, mm. you know, um, in the business. Uh, with Fire Equity, uh, we saw a structure that was similar to custodian structure, very, at the time, very nimble, mm. you know, simple business. Mm. So we realized that, look, getting into this space, it, it's unlikely we'll have challenges. Mm. So that was an attraction for us. 
um, with Crusader, at some point in time, we had doubled into life insurance, but very sh over a short period. So for, for us, with Crusader, um, we were able to establish into ourselves the into life the, space. Yeah, the life space and the pension space. And, um, and you know, um, it's, it's a company that's, that's been there for over 50 years. As a matter of fact, I worked there okay. at some point in time. You know, so, uh, you know, it's a well-run company. Mm. And um, we saw in that space the things that we wanted to expand into. And um, thankfully, we also had good managers mm. running the company at the time. Mm. Excellent. So now, Corsodan is one of the top three in the country. Correct. Absolutely. Well, you've done a good job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll be right back. According to my guest, the Nigerian insurance sector is undergoing a silent transformation. Si transformation in terms of people, in terms of institutions such as his, in terms of regulation, products and services and the financial capacity of the industry. His institution, like I said, is a, is a prime example of that transition. An institution locally started, small, that has grown through acquisitions and organic growth into one of Nigeria's three leading insurance companies. His firm and him as an entrepreneur are an example to the Nigerian business class. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.